Hi everybody, Steve here. I've got something special for you today and it's not generative art. I've combined PoseNet with P5 Play. PoseNet is a machine learning model that identifies key points on your body. PoseNet is included in the ML5 library, which is a collection of machine learning tools for P5JS. Over two years ago, I made a video using hand pose to draw in the air with my finger. P5 Play is a physics and game engine for P5JS. I made an introduction to P5 Play recently. Links to all this stuff, including my code, will be in the video description. Let's start with the ML5JS website. There is plenty of information here. We are looking for PoseNet. So I'll click that. And there's some description about what PoseNet is and how to use it. And then there's these examples. I'm going to click that. Here's the P5 web editor section, and you can see there's a PoseNet part selection and a PoseNet webcam. So let's click on the PoseNet webcam. It opens up a P5JS sketch. Now I'm going to have to turn off my camera, and now I'll hit play. And so you can see it is capturing information about me, my skeleton. So this is what we're going to be using to capture the balls. This example has lots of comments describing what each part of this is about. What I did was I went down to this uh, draw the skeleton section and I don't need to actually draw the skeleton. See where it says line part A uh, X and part B X and Y. Uh, so I want this to use this information but I don't want to draw this line because I'm going to be using P5 Play to draw lines, which are really uh, rectangles in P5 Play. They're, they'll be sprites. So I'll go through this code really quickly. It uh, initiates the video capture. Uh, the PoseNet gets initialized here. Then in the draw function, we're showing the video and then we're drawing key points and drawing the skeleton. So in the function draw key points, we're looping through all the poses that are detected by the machine learning model, and for each pose detected, loop through all the key points. So a key point is an object describing a body part like right arm or left shoulder. So then it draws an ellipse for all the key points right here. Then it goes to the draw skeleton function. This function loops through all the skeletons detected, for every skeleton, loop through all the body connections. And from that, we're going to be drawing lines from one body's part to another body part, from like the elbow to the wrist. So now I've switched over to my code, which is combining the PoseNet with P5 Play. The beginning of this is the same as it was before, but in setup, I've added some P5 Play elements. I'm adding some limbs as a new group that's uh, to replace the skeleton parts. Then I've got the balls is also a new group and I'm setting the world gravity to nine. The limbs are gonna be colored blue. So then in the draw function, uh, the image is the same as before, but the next thing right after that is we're going to be creating ball sprites. But I don't want too many balls, so I've limited how many balls are being created. So this creates a new ball sprite in the middle of the canvas, at the top of the canvas, 20 pixels in diameter. This limbs remove all I'll come back to. Then we're going to draw a skeleton. Let's go to draw a skeleton function. We do the same thing we were doing before, but instead of drawing the lines of the skeleton, like here, I've commented out drawing those lines. Instead, we're calculating what's needed to make the limbs. P5 Play, when it makes a sprite, and in this case, the sprite I'm talking about is going to be my arm, the position of this sprite is going to be in the middle of the arm. So how do we get this point in the middle from this point and this point? Well, we just average the x's and we average the y's, and that gives us this middle point. So that's what I'm doing here. I need to know how long to make the sprite. Well, that's going to be the distance function from point here to point here. Then I need to know what angle is this arm at right now so I know how to draw that sprite, what angle to draw that sprite. I need to find the angle that is formed from these two points. 
So the formula for finding that angle is take the y's, subtract one from the other, and take the x's and subtract one from the other. Divide the y by the x, and then take the arctangent of that, and that gives you the angle. So that is what I'm doing right here. From all of these bits, I now have what I need to draw my sprite. Sprite equals new limbs dot sprite, sprite x, sprite y, that's the position of the sprite. Distance is going to be the length of that sprite. 10 is just the height of the sprite, so I'm making the limbs 10 wide. After that, I'm going to set the sprite rotation equal to the angle that I calculated up here. So that's basically it, except if I do the new limbs, it continually creates new limbs. And so that's why in the draw function, I have to do limbs remove all to get rid of all the limbs that were created in the draw skeleton function. So let's give that a whirl. All right, I got my ball's coming down. There we go. And we'll let him go up the edge. There we go. Isn't that fun? And you can play with this in your browser. So just uh, click on that code in the video description and you can start playing with this right away. So having done that, I'm gonna move on to another example. This is basically the same thing, except it has a couple of cups drawn at the bottom right and bottom left. So for the cups, I created another group, borders equals new group, uh, made them static, colored them yellow, and called this function draw borders, and that is down here. And the draw borders is creating the sprites to form the cup. So let's give that a whirl. Here we go. Again, you can play with this. This brings up all kinds of possibilities for making games. The next example is the same thing as the cups that were at the bottom, but I just moved the cups, except I turned off the balls falling from above, and I added one large ball right inside one of the cups. So the idea is to move the ball. So let's move it, pick it up, and let it go down here. There we go, did it. The final example is different from the others. So to do this one, I had to go back to the PoseNet site and get another example. This is the part selection example. So we'll click on that. And here I'm hitting play. So this is selecting my eyes and my nose. If we look in the code, you'll see let nose equals pose nose, which is fun to say. Um, and let right eye equal pose right eye. Now there is, I believe, a mouse press that's gonna give us some information. Let me see. Let me deactivate my camera, load it, and I'm gonna press the mouse button. And in our console down here, it's gonna give us all the information that it's collecting about the parts that it's identifying. And if you see in here, these are the names of the parts it's identifying, left ankle, right knee, what is PoseNet calling all of these parts? Then you can just do this example and read through this to find out what all the parts are called. So the first thing I wanted to do was instead of identifying the nose and the eyes, I wanted to identify my wrist, my right wrist and my right elbow because that was gonna become the Canon. Here's my Canon arm code and I am identifying the right wrist and the right elbow. Then I'm going to create a Canon sprite. Just as before when I was trying to draw this arm, I am grabbing the X of the wrist and the X of the elbow and dividing by two to get the average, which is going to give me this middle point, the same with the Y, and that gives me where the center of the Canon is going to go. And I do the same thing as before using the distance function and the angle function. Here I'm creating the sprite of the cannon and giving it the angle rotation. Then right after that, I'm going to be creating a ball that's gonna shoot out of the cannon. There's one in 15 chance that a ball shoots out of the cannon. 
So then the ball gets created starting at the right wrist. And then we can set the direction that the ball is moving and the speed that the ball is moving. The direction the ball is moving is the same as the angle of the arm and the speed I've set to 14. Now, a funny thing, if I was pointing in one direction uh, versus another direction, I'd get different speeds of the ball coming out of the cannon. I don't know why, but I had to increase the speed going in one direction for it to look the same. So in one direction, it's going 14, and in the other direction, it's going 70. I don't know why. Also, there's a culling of the balls. I forgot to mention that before. Uh, I had this set to culls zero, which means that the balls, any ball that went off the screen would disappear, would be removed from the array of balls. But in this case, I decided to make the call point 2000 pixels off the screen because I wanted to be able to shoot balls straight up in the air and have them come back down. One thing I forgot to mention is the flipping of the scene. So I'm doing this with all of these examples. Uh, when you start the ML5 examples, uh, it's not a mirror image. So it's a little confusing when you're trying to capture balls and your body is doing the opposite of what you think it should be doing. So I had to flip the scene horizontally and this is how you can flip the scene horizontally. Grab the image that's on the canvas at the moment, translate to the right side of the canvas, then scale negative one, and that's gonna flip it. And then you have to put the image of that cam back onto the canvas. So that's how it works. All right, let's play this final example. And here we go. We're shooting, we'll shoot some up in the air. We'll shoot some to the side. There are some of them coming back down. Of course, there are gonna be games that you can make with this thing, right? shooting at targets maybe unfortunately if you have two people here at the same time both people can't use a cannon arm because the machine will get confused and it wants to put the cannon on one arm or the other so that's everything i wanted to go over with you today uh, i encourage you to check out the examples and try to make something out of all this you can borrow the code and change it however you like it would be really cool if somebody made a game let me know any comments you have. If you like this video, give it a like. Consider subscribing to the channel. Ring the bell for notifications. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye now.